Welcome to another edition of Sci-Fi Journal presented by the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club. This show is for October 2018. Note the spooky venues. Everybody say, ooh, ooh, ooh spooky. All right, I'm Mark Morriso. Also hosting the show today are James Hincy, Ian Kingston, Calvin Watts III, and Matty Morriso. All right, we start off talking about the wonderful world of movies with a little segment we call Popcorn Previews. Take it away, Ian. Since it's the Halloween special, uh, I would like to just start off by having a movie that everybody might be familiar with called Halloween, coming out on October 19th. Uh, it's directed by David Gordon Reed and starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, and Nick Castle. The description and write-up goes, it's been 40 years since uh, Lord Strode uh, survived a vicious attack from crazed killer Michael Myers. She now faces another show clown, but she is ready this time. Uh, so let's take a look at that clip. Testing one, two, three. We're on. We're here to investigate a patient that killed three innocent teenagers on a Halloween in 1978. He was shot by his own psychiatrist and taken into custody that night. And has spent the last 40 years in captivity. Hello, Michael. I have something you might like to see. <laughs> Everyone in my family, like, turns into a nutcase this time of year. Yeah, I mean, your grandmother is Lori Strode. She was almost murdered. Wasn't it her brother who murdered all those babysitters? No, it was not her brother. That's something that people made up. Do you know that I pray every night that he would escape? What the hell did you do that for? So I can kill him. Dad, look out! The bus crashed. Mom, what bus crashed? Michael escaped. Excuse me, somebody's in here. Hello? He's waited for this night. He's waited for me. I've waited for him. Get out! Go home! Get inside! You don't believe in the boogeyman. He's here! Michael! You should. Can you close the closet door? Ba, so, ba, ba. so it's an actual oh, yeah. sequel to the original Halloween? Yes. Oh, cool. That's awesome. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, I was a huge fan of the original. So yeah. uh, it's nice that they're kind of bringing it back, but con with a continuation several, obviously, 40 years later. Right. Um, so it should be exciting. And it's got, you know, a pretty good cast behind it, Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer. So, you know, hopefully it'll be fun yeah. and exciting. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so up next we have The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. As anybody who knows me knows, I'm a huge Disney fan. Well, I thought and, you were going to uh, say I'm a huge Nutcracker fan. But. Well, well I'm he just is a huge nuts. nut. <laughs> so, See? Yeah, I, that works. I knew you were going to say it, so yeah. I had to get ahead of it works this time. So, <laughs> uh, and It comes out on November 2nd, so this will be right after Halloween, right, uh, right before our next show starts airing. And uh, it's directed by Joe Johnston 
and Lassie Hailstrom, Hailstrom, I can never say that name, um, but it'll, it should be pretty awesome. It's also directed, or music composed by James Newton Howard, who did a lot of the music for Harry Potter, which oh. I think is pretty cool. cool. So we know it's going to have an awesome music background. It's got some awesome directors behind it. The cast is Mackenzie Fox, Kira Knightley, and Morgan Freeman. So we've got some amazing voices and amazing uh, you know, eye candy Freeman. there as well. Yep. And uh, the description goes, young Clara needs a magical, one-of-a-kind key to unlock a box that contains a magical world. So it sounds like it's going to be a little bit nuts. Uh, pun intended. We've already uh, made that joke about me, so now I can make it about yeah. the movie. And uh, so let's take a look at that clip. Merry Christmas, Clara. Godfather. Your gift this year will be something you'll never forget. Most people don't realize there are troubled realms within our world. And you hold the key to their secrets. Remember, Clara, nothing is as it seems. Where am I? You're in the Four Realms, Princess Clara. Princess? At your service, Your Majesty. Maybe I have been spending too much time in the attic. Welcome to our world. The land of snowflakes. The land of flowers. And the land of sweets. But in the Fourth Realm, this is where our troubles began. Mother Ginger started this war. Don't you know it's dangerous here? I hope you'll be the one to finish it. It's time to save the kingdom. It's just the laws of physics. Do those laws always work? As far as I know. Ready. Go! Forces. You're the only one who can stop her. Hang on. I've been expecting you. <laughs> it's time. Uh, so I'm really excited about this one. Like I said, I'm a huge Disney fan. This clip looks unreal. And if it's, you know, the, the uh, same kind of idea and scope of like Chronicles of Narnia, mm -hmm. Alice in uh, Wonderland, and a bunch of the other mm -hmm. kind of fun movies that we've been seeing over the last several right. years. So I'm just really excited. This will be another fun one to go to see with your family. All right, so uh, that's it for popcorn previews. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So it being Halloween, of course, I'm going to have some like spooky related news, including like a Halloween thing. So um, let's talk about home video releases really quick. So out right now, this is really cool. Universal Classic Monsters Complete Film Collection. Yes. 30 films from the 30s up to like the late 50s. So you're talking The Mummy, The Wolfman, uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, The Invisible Man, mm. Creature from the Black Lagoon. E even the, the stupid ones are like Abbott and Costello. They're, they're all in there. Your Plex account is going to be full. So, um, so. Mm. Universal also released as, as a, a side collection. So if you, want, you don't want to get the whole thing, but if you are a, a fan of The Invisible Man, they have an Invisible Man box set. How do you find it? What do you mean, how you find it? It's you're, invisible. You find the set. Oh, okay. You're not going to find the guy, ah, but you're right. going to find the set that the guy's on. Got it. Okay. So there. All right. Um, and they also have the Creature from the Black Lagoon 3 um, disc set. There is an issue which has been noted with um, Revenge of the Creature and the Creature Walks Among Us, but if, you end up, if you're interested in buying these, you can contact Universal, and they are offering disc replacement, so it's not really a big deal. Um, also out at this moment, so we're filming in September, so it's not out, but when you're seeing this in October, it is out. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which wasn't too bad. That was pretty good. 
So I like, I like that. And they're also going to have a box set in, in 4K and Blu-ray of all the previous movies. So if you haven't gotten any of them yet, you'll be able to get all of them in one. I still have the original Jurassic Park on VHS. That's cool. I do. Because you're I'm old. old. Yeah. Every once in a while, every yeah. once in a while, I'll pop it in just to keep it running. Yeah. So Ian mentioned Halloween earlier. Um, the original John Carpenter classic Halloween movie is going to be available in 4K for the first oh, time. So yeah. remastered, absolute classic, one of the best horror movies like ever. That spider um, head thing in 4K. Oh, that's scary. Right. You know what? And, and speaking of John Carpenter's, one of Stephen King's better adaptations, Christine, um, the 35th anniversary. That is also out in 4K mm. and Blu-ray. Wow. And last but not least, I enjoyed it, but you know, I think it was Star Wars Overkill. Solo a Star Wars Story is now available for, for I purchase. Like it. Yeah. I'm I gonna, like it. I'm going to pick that up on DVD. So, mm -hmm. coming out this month, on the 9th, the classic cult movie, The Evil Dead, 4K version. On the 23rd, another cult movie, Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive, which was really cool because it had the Green Goblin tractor trailer mm -hmm. and a really awesome soundtrack by ACDC. Um, it's a collector's edition. That's out on the 23rd on Blu-ray. And really, really big on the 30th, we have the Matrix tri Matrix Trilogy um, in 4K for the first wow. time, uh, including mm -hmm. the individual films. 2001, A Space Odyssey, remastered. 4K. Um, it, it's it's been totally redone over. Uh, the reviews have been like outstanding. So if you're a fan of 2001 and you have the equipment, that's the way to see it. And last and certainly not least, it's limited to 30,000. But Warner Brothers has remastered Batman the Animated Series in a deluxe wow. edition wow. box set. So all 109 episodes over the four seasons, um, they're also going to have the, the limited edition Blu-ray sets going to have mini Batman, Joker, and Harley Quinn Funko Pops, collector cards, and also Blu-ray versions of Mask of the Phantasm and Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero movies. So wow. That, so that's pretty cool. That's really cool. All right, so moving on to gaming. So there's, there's a couple of things um, really quick. So the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game is out now. It just came out as, as we speak. Um, it's gotten really good reviews. I eventually will have a PlayStation 4, and I will give my own reviews on it. So there's now that it's two, like, absolute I must have games on it. So I'll let you know how it is, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. I can come yeah. over and I can play it. So that would be like like kind of cool. That's but, an excuse to but, go. Huh? But there's a reason why I don't have a PlayStation 4, and I'll get into that later on in the show. Um, speaking of, of Sony, uh, the Sony PlayStation executive has stated that Fortnite, as well as other games, will not ever be made cross-play compatible with the Xbox. Oh. For those of you who don't know, the Xbox and the PC um, have released like a, a bunch of games. That So if you own it unlike the Xbox, you can play that version on the PC. Hmm. Uh, and there are certain games like Minecraft, like Fortnite, that you can actually compete against people playing on, on the different systems. So they, they have that capability. And they have the capability now, and, 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 and it's not much more than flipping a switch that you could actually play multiplayer against people on the PlayStation 4, but Sony would have to allow it, and they're, they're saying no. So a lot of people are up in arms or it, but it looks like that's going to stick. Is so. there an Android version of that game? Of what? Fortnite. Uh, there is, actually. There is? Okay. I have no idea how good it is, but yeah, there is an Android version. You know, version. I, we just started school, as we take, we just started school this week, and I actually had a pre-K student who said, oh yeah, Mr. Mark, I played Fortnite during, this, during the summer. Yeah, like actually, four years old. I actually saw on, on, on my Facebook post, somebody had posted, it was like a back to school message, right. and it was like Fortnite, uh, you know, detoxification yeah. party <laughs> yes, starts, starts at eight yeah. o'clock on this day. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that, was, that was like pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I really wasn't going to talk about pinball and the fact that Stern announced their latest pinball machine, which is based on the Deadpool comic, which is like really cool. Mm -hmm. However, you guys know I'm a big fan of digital pinball. And really? Yes. Yeah. I never would have guessed. <laughs> and wow. a nuclear bomb went off this week, so I have to talk about it. So, uh, as you will know, we talked about earlier that the Pinball Arcade a few months ago lost a license to the Bally Williams con collection, which is generally considered the, the best um, kinds of pinball tables that, that were released from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Mm. So there was speculation that the parent company who has been out of the pinball business for a while, so they were just licensing the products out because they're into primarily casino gambling. 
that they were just going to sit on a license. Nobody knew what was going to happen. So Pinball Arcade is still around, and, and in fact, they just came out with the, their latest releases from Stern, uh, Woe Nelly, Big Juicy Melons, which we showed a couple of years ago from the Pentastic. It's a, a modified like EM table, and Big Buck Hunter Pro, which is based on the, the hunting game. Glad you didn't mispronounce that one. Okay. However, <laughs> Zen Studios, which makes the excellent <laughs> Pinball FX uh, collection, their, their latest release is Pinball FX3, they got the rights to the Bally Williams tables. Wow. Which is, which oh, is all right. like... So at least somebody picked it up. Yes, yeah, so, so somebody okay. picked it up. So that's, right. like, that's like a really, really big deal. They've been doing um, pinball tables for years, and you know, their, their own versions. And, and they have the clout to do a lot of things that Farsight wouldn't be able to. Because, I mean, they, they have a lot of tables are licensed. They got tables based on the Star Wars properties, hmm. on the Marvel properties. Their Captain America table is, like, awesome. Um, their app is set up for like tournaments and, and a lot of stuff that, for whatever reason, Farsight wasn't able to do with the Pimple Arcade. So it's like really, really big deal. So um, their initial release is going to be a four pack. Initial releases are going to be on the consoles. So Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and Mac PC. Um, if you go on Steam right now, you can actually try a beta of the first four tables that are going to be released, which are the classic Fish Tales. The Getaway, High Speed 2, um, Junkyard, and Medieval Madness, is, which is one of my favorite yeah, tables of, like, of all time. And there'll probably be another pack come out by the end of the year and, and future tables as they release. That's like really, really big. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to trying it out. Okay, boys and girls, we have a special treat for you today. In studio, I have with me John Medeiros, who is the founder of the Rhode Island Funko Pop Trading Group. Now, for those of you who are not living under a rock, you should know what Funko is. Funko is, is basically like a deformed action figure, statuette, however you want to pronounce it, but they have little statuettes of pretty much everything under the planet. So they're like really cool, and, and John is really cool, and we're going to talk about it like right now. So John, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Why don't we talk a little bit about Funko Pops, what they are, and how you got into them. Uh, Funko Pop. They are a little vinyl piece of, you know, they have a documentary actually on uh, Netflix about how they, they were created, everything came about. I think they started in 2010 maybe. Okay. And it's, it's a cool, like there's different branches. There's vinyl, there's pop, uh, a couple other variations I don't even know anymore, but it's all made by the same exact group. They do look a little weird, little deformed bodies, but you know, they're cool. I like them the way they, uh, they're very articulate. And uh, some of them actually do bobble. Some of them actually come headless, like Game of Thrones, headless Ned Stark. I have no idea about that show. But that one, headless Ned Stark, goes around $1,200, a little wow. bit more than that sometimes. So these are pretty interesting toys right here. So, yeah, and, and it's kind of like anything else. Um, you, you have some that are very rare, and, and you have variants, and you have, you know, some highly collectible ones. And, and like what you were saying, I mean, they have all sorts of stuff. You mentioned Game of Thrones. I know they have, like, Marvel and DC superheroes, all, all sorts of, uh, like, cartoons. They got stuff from video games, everything. television shows. Pop yeah, culture, pre presidential, you know, people, everything, everything under the sun. So this is sort of really cool. So I know you brought some, like, special stuff with you today, so why don't we talk a little bit about those. Go ahead and, and pick one and... and have at it. Well, one of my favorite ones right here, this is Captain Spaulding from the Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpses. This, it's not a rare, rare piece, but he's definitely worth over a hundred dollars. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Come on now. I love this thing right here. Uh, I think I ended up making a couple of trades with a friend of mine from uh, Joe, Joe Iglesias. Mm -hmm. He owns Sensational Comics. He does comic books, toys, everything like that so he has he mostly does pops though that's like his small thing he's a big star wars fan okay and he was just at a uh, star wars convention where there was about 200 people and it was just invite only so it's like really exclusive people but uh yeah i got this one from him he's worth a little over 100 but he's one of my favorite pieces i would never get rid of this thing this right here is venom of course everybody knows Venom. This is the time of year that, you know, uh, October his movies coming out. That's right. But this is an original piece. This came out I think in 2015, 2014. The sticker on it exclusive. They have all different variations of stickers. This is the original one. This is the first uh, first edition they made. And then they made another one with a Walgreens sticker that's like it's like a bigger sticker over here. Right. 
and uh, it's it's worth a little bit less, but because it's the original one, uh, it's worth more. So he's worth around fifty dollars. And okay. when the like movie comes out, it's going to spike a hell of a lot more. Yeah. So uh, this is one of my very first pieces I ever picked up it was Darth Vader, Force Choke Darth Vader, and he's worth about twenty bucks. And something like that, I don't really care about just because it's one of my favorites. It's sentimental you know? value. It's Darth Vader, you know. Who doesn't like that? And right. I would take him out of the box, but that would depreciate the value just a little <laughs> bit, you know. So I do have some that are out of the box as well. Um, some of my other favorite pieces I have over here, Brack and Zorak from Space Ghost. Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, Space Ghost, The Brack Show, yep. all those. And now these are Toy Tokyo exclusives. So they're limited edition. There's only, you know, maybe 3,000 of these pieces around. Mm. Uh, and they're going for about $90 for both of them. I think Brack is worth about $55. He's worth about 30, if not around same area. But these are awesome pieces, just like, you know, the articulation in them. You can see the faces and everything. And a lot of people, you know, that either grew up watching Space Ghost or just watching, like, right. I grew up watching that, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Uh, this piece I have right here, it's in a box. That's how it came shipped. I got it from a group called uh, Box Lunch. Okay. I think they're a subsidiary to Hot Topic, yep. if I'm not mistaken. And this is a set they made that's all gold pieces. Oh, that's nice. It's not like, you know, gold-plated I wish it was. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is Star-Lord. He's a box lunch exclusive. It's about, like, $20 in value. They have other ones like Iron Man, Loki, Captain America, Groot, Hulk, Black Widow, Thor, Gamora, Black Panther, and Ant-Man. But this is one of the exclusive ones, and uh, he's pretty cool. I like the way that looks. So I keep him in his little box. But my favorite pieces that I have over here, uh, this is what constitutes as a grail. Grails are anything that's worth over $100, but uh, these are just like my favorite pieces ever. And there's three variations of this. This is Dr. Doom from uh, Fantastic Four villain. So I have two of the three. The third one I don't have is a black and white variation. I did have them at one point, but I got rid of them quick. Uh -huh. So I have a regular Dr. Doom. And then the metallic Doctor Doom. And the metallic Doctor Doom, as you can see, I don't know if you can do a zoom in on that, but it's just you know, more of a metallic color. Right. And this is the rarest one they have. This one's worth around $375. And this one's around $150. And the black and white's around the same $125. So um, there's a lot of variation in pops. And, you know, I, these are my favorite pieces by, by far, you know. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you know about around how much they're worth at current prices. But you know, as as most collectors are, you know, it, it's a sentimental value thing. You, exactly, know, you don't want to exactly. get rid of them. You could have something so. that's worth you know five dollars, and it it could be you know the best thing for you. You know, I have um, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage out of box. My friend, he he buys collections, mm -hmm. so I had seen. He's like, oh, look at this whole box. You know, I I grabbed a couple, and I was like, oh man, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. I got him for 10 bucks. He could have gotten a little bit more from him, but he, I'm his friend, so he didn't care. But uh, just something like that, you know, I'll have that for my son, you know, when he gets older, you know, he'll know what his dad liked. And come on, Mega Powers right there. You yeah. know, just have him. I have a lot of wrestling guys too. Which but. is awesome. Wrestling is awesome. Exactly. I know you mentioned when we were talking off camera, you mentioned Sting. Sting's like one of my oh, favorite yes. wrestlers yep. of all time. So, yeah. Um, I mean, literally almost anything you can think of, they have a Funko Pop. And, and you know, except that Seinfeld. Which I wish that should be coming next. Hey, never know. Yep. And you know, it, it, it's gotten big enough whether you actually have. I, I noticed it that when we're at Terrific Con that they actually have like uh, special containers that mm -hmm. you can put them in to save them. I actually have some of those cool. right here. These are glass cases. They cost around ten dollars, a little bit more, a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, depends on where you go. You go to GameStop, you'll pay around ten dollars or an arm and a leg, maybe your soul. Doesn't matter. And just pop them right in there, just to keep them, you know, extra protected. Make sure that they, uh, you know, nothing happens to them. You know, anything can happen. Right. But then I also have these cases too. They're just a little plastic case. I actually sell these as well. I buy them in bulk and sell them for about a dollar a piece or different variations in prices like uh, twenty, twenty-five of these for twenty dollars or seventy for a hundred dollars, uh, seventy dollars for a hundred of them. I apologize. <laughs> Yep, and this is it, just a little plastic case, you know, so you're preventing, you know, a lot of shelf wear. You could stack them easier without having to worry about something else. Right. So, especially when shipping, if I sell some of them, I'll ship them out in that. I did have Beavis and Butthead recently. I had those for a while, and I ended up shipping them out in the cases. 
So the guy kind of made up, but I still got a good price for those. That's good. So you founded a, a trading group here in yes. Rhode Island called the, the Rhode Island Funko Pop Trading Group. Yep. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because obviously mm -hmm. if there's uh, enough people that are willing to trade and do that stuff, so that's yes. kind of like a big deal. So, so I'm going to say late last year, there was a, I found a group. I collected a few of these. I had about nine of them for about a year. And then just randomly one day I was like, oh, let me just see the value of some of these. So I went through my nine I had, and this Darth Vader was like worth 20 bucks. I'm showing my girlfriend like, oh man, look at this, it's worth 20 bucks. Like, wow, it's crazy. And uh, so I found a group, or I found a page, it's called PPG, Pop Price Guide. And uh, they actually have a, a Facebook group. There's like thousands of people, about 3,000 people. Um, so they actually have a tracker. You can use a, a website separately, so you can track your whole collection. It will tell you how much, like how many you have, what the like complete value is worth, and then uh, just randomly, I was like, you know, let me ask people in here, you know, who's from New England, who's from Rhode Island, Southern Massachusetts. So I found maybe three, four, five people, and uh, I sent them friend requests, talked to them. I was like, you know, I'm gonna make a group, you know, start something out. So I made the group. It was just the stupid little flyer. I had Fry shut up and take my money, you know, and a couple other like random things. I don't know how to make flyers at that time, but uh, basically just made a group. And then I would go through Facebook, um, the app Let Go, and a couple other ways to try to find other people that were selling pops. And it was like, oh yeah, I'll buy that from you, but hey, are you from Rhode Island? And just try to get them to join my group. So I maybe had 15 people. There would be a post like every couple of days. So it wasn't active. It was just, you know, there. People just do that. And then I, I think I did my first pop swap in May. And I did that at Shelter Arcade Bar. Awesome place. It is. It's a very awesome place. I'm good friends with the owner of it. And um, I, I gave him, I used to do video game events over there. I was, I was running a lot of them. I would do retro game nights and stuff like that. So we always had a good relationship when it came to that. So when I gave him the idea for a pop group, he was like, oh yeah, definitely, man, you know, you come do it. So I set up the flyer, set up the event, and uh, two guys ended up co like coming right off the rip. They were there. They were there before me. They had their bins, and uh, I'm going to say 15 people maybe ended up coming, and half those people were like, or a third of those people were my cousins or, you know, some of my family and stuff. So it was small, and it was a humble beginning, and people had fun there. You know, it was just a few people. The second swap I ended up posting, which was a month later, we ended up running out of room. We filled up the whole bottom of that. We ended up having people upstairs, and there was about 20 people there, but people actually brought a lot of stuff this time. And uh, more people just started, started hearing about the group. Word of mouth. And it does it. <laughs> it does. Even, even in today's yeah. digital age, it's, it's still a big thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. And so we went from having 15 people in the early beginning of the year to having 220 people now. And wow, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a big jump. Every single day, there's people posting stuff on there, buying, selling, trading. And uh, there's people that, people hook me up all the time. And I, I don't sit there and I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. People hook me up just because they created a lot of uh, new friends, a lot of bonds with new people. And these people talk to each other more on that group than they do on their own Facebook pages. A lot of them hang out. A lot of them just created great friendships. And that's, that's amazing to be able to... Uh, to create something like that, and people can enjoy that. And that's that's where the, the, the positive aspect of the internet and social media comes in. Exactly, you, know, you can yes. meet new friends, and, 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 I, and I've said this before, if you're into something, it really doesn't matter how obscure it is, there's somebody out there that, that's into it, and, and you mm -hmm. can meet them and, and, and talk to them, and then you never know. It's something that happens really small, and now it's like a really big thing. So when do you usually have your meets? I mean, you mentioned um, Shelter, so yep. do you usually have them there? I did two at Shelter, but I actually ended up outgrowing Shelter Arcade Bar. So um, I held it off for a little bit because I think Toy Vault and Barnes Noble have pop swaps. Okay. So then I did one with GameStop. Okay. And uh, I was just a favor for the guy over there. He ended up, he helps me out a lot when I need some pops that I just can't get. And... Uh, yeah, that's yep. a really good place to go and get pops now. Yep, exactly, exactly. Um, but I did two pop swaps over there. It was just small pop swaps, but that was fine. I got my Karate Kid set from one of those. And uh, that was just, it was just a small little thing. So then I ended up having the big boy pop swap. And we did that at a church in Providence right across the street from Fellini's Pizza. Okay. Okay. And uh, that we ended up having 50 people. 50 people come to that. And again, the group still wasn't even as big. 
we had maybe a hundred something people in that group. So we had 50 people. We had, I think 20 tables like packed. People were having fun. Uh, we had kids there, you know, I brought like a PlayStation for them to play and which was a bad move because they were just getting my discs dirty <laughs> and I was like scratch my head like, oh my God. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very protective of, of my media. Yeah, exactly, so I, exactly. I, I understand. <laughs> so um, do you have a, a next meet scheduled? I do. It's going to be between October 4th and 6th. We're just working out, you know, like the last minute, um, you know, if the place is going to be okay with the time limit we have and just a couple other minor things. But yeah, that's it, October 4th or 6th. But also, if you go to Rhode Island Funko Pop Group on Facebook, there'll be a page there. We have four people running it all the time. So um, you add, you know, you can add yourself to it. You'll be accepted very quickly, and all that information will be there. Okay. So October 4th to 6th, I will do my best to, to, to make it. And I thank you very much for coming into the no, studio. Thank you for having me. Stuff is awesome. Oh, you are very welcome. There you go. Okay, so now we are on to books and board games with Madison Morso. So take it away, Maddie. Thank you. So as I started this segment, I started to realize that throughout the year there are some months that have a ton of things coming out. I have so many things to talk about. I have to pick and choose. And then there's months like November where there's nothing. So I found that these are October, November tend to be the months of expansion packs. So I can guarantee you whatever tabletop game, card game, anything that you find, you will find an expansion pack for it out right now. Um, I was only able to find two games that are going to be released in November. So I want to give you guys a heads up. One of them is called Legendary Showdown Machines and Magic. It's a tabletop game. It's good ages 12 plus with two to seven players, so a nice game to have for a party. Um, it's about 30 minutes of play time, they say, so it's a decent amount of time. It's not like some that I've covered where it's two hours, three hours, those really in-depth games. Um, this one's pretty plain and simple. You end up developing a secret battle plan to sabotage your friends and be the last one standing. Now that's all that they really say. I noticed that it has pawns, it's got a board, it's got cards, so there's all these different things. You're essentially working against all the other players to see who's the last one standing. So if you're into one of those classic fight against all your friends type of games, this is the one for you. And the other game that I found is called Zogan. This is a card game. Um, it's ages six plus, so it's good for younger families. Um, you have about two to six players, so an average family size could play it, which is nice. About 20 minutes of play time. And essentially the players, or they're called researchers, you want to rid yourselves of a microorganism as quickly as you can, but you also have to watch your laboratory. Lab so it's she a said game. laboratory. laboratory. Mm. Okay, Dexter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I think this is pretty. It seems pretty simple. It's fun, bright color, so it'll be good for younger kids. Um, it's one of those you're playing with what other people put down and seeing who can go the fastest. So a fast-paced, fun, engaging game. Um, as far as books go, really couldn't find anything, which is unfortunate. Um, science fiction genre in terms of books is difficult. Um, I know for schools it's difficult to find books for kids, and apparently now it's also difficult to find books for adults too. So if you guys have any books that come out this month that you want to share, I know we post on YouTube, comment them down below, do whatever, send them to us so I can promote them in the next show. Um, I couldn't find anything, but I know you guys are great with scavenging the interweb, so if you find anything, let me know. The interwebs. The interwebs. Wow, we're using the heavy words today. <laughs> Laboratory <laughs> interwebs. <laughs> Remember? Dee the, dee. It's made of two. <laughs> <laughs> made of two. Made of two. Oh my God, two. it's full of stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other movie. So moving uh, on to one segment that I know we all love and enjoy. We are going to move on to Tube News with my daddy-o, Mark. Take it away. Daddy-o. <laughs> well, my, you, my you old, you my are, old, you old are, daddy, you, you are old. I haven't put my glasses on. That's how freaking old I mm -hmm. am. All right, tube news for October. Here we go. I have to first start by talking about Doctor Who, because mm. Doctor Who, we finally have a premiere date. 
It's this month in October. It's going to premiere on Sunday, October 7th with Jodie Whittaker as the 13th Doctor. I am stoked. This is going to be really awesome. The title of the show is The Woman Who Fell to Earth. There's no time yet. We know that it'll be simulcast in the UK and the United States of America, but then we don't know if it's going to go back to Saturdays or stay with Sundays or what they're going to do. But anyways, if you're a big Doctor Who fan like I am, look for that on, on October 7th. Okay, now let's get into the spooky stuff because it's October. Horror TV shows for October. Adam's going to like this one. You got to check out The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror 29 on Fox. No air <laughs> data has been announced yet, but the highlights include Homer beats Cthulhu in an oyster eating contest. <laughs> All right. There are homages to Jurassic Park. Uh, Springfield is overrun by plant body snatchers. And the scariest one, Lisa finally snaps. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so we can only imagine what's going to happen. This will air sometime during the Halloween season, so watch for that. Treehouse of, of Horror on Fox. Good old Simpsons. Great stuff. Another one you should be checking out if you're into horror is Constantine, City of Demons. It's on the CW Seed. You can find it on the Amazon channel, Amazon mm -hmm. Prime. It's an animated series based on the DC character. Matt Ryan, who uh, portrayed Constantine in the live action show, he had his own series, and now he's appearing on Legends of Tomorrow on yeah. the CW. Um, he voices the character, which is pretty neat, and it's supposed to be really, really spooky stuff. So check out Constantine, City of Demons on the CW Seed. And then next we have Sci-Fi's Night Flyers, which is a series based on the George R. R. Martin book. It was originally a movie back in 1987. Were you even around in 1987? <laughs> I know. So um, you were. You guys weren't around in 1987. No, no. they weren't around they in weren't. 1987. That was two years before my brother was born. <laughs> 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 All right. So check that. That is supposed to be. Uh, it's been described as psycho in space. Ah, okay. So it's got some good horror elements in there. Imagine being on a three mile long spaceship with nowhere to go in the middle of nowhere and everyone's trying to kill you. Event horizon. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And then last but not least, um, there are a lot of zombie shows out there. There's Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead, but my favorite zombie show on TV is Z Nation on sci-fi. That's going to premiere on October 5th at 10 p.m. on the Sci-Fi Channel. Why is it your favorite show? It's my favorite show because it's a nice com uh, combination of comedy and horror. I mean, you know, it doesn't really take itself too seriously yeah. when <laughs> one of the biggest obstacles in the Z Nation series is this giant ball of zombies that just rolls through town. <laughs> it's it, and it picks up everything. It's like a giant cheese wheel. Yeah. It just rolls through town. Katamari. And, yeah, yeah, and every just once roll, in a while, roll, roll, roll. there's no explanation for it. The guys will be, <laughs> the guys will be talking in the foreground, talking, oh yeah, where are we gonna go? Yeah, we gotta go such and such. We gotta get this virus killed. And in the background, all of a sudden, there's this giant ball of zombies that just rolls <laughs> by with no explanation. It just keeps going and going and going. This is season five of this show, it's probably going to be the last season, which is good, it needs to wrap up, but Z Nation is definitely worth checking out if it's a horror stuff. All right, that's all I have this month for Tube News. Let's move on to the wonderful world of anime with James Hinsey and a segment we call Anime Daisuke. Ready? Go, go James, go! go. So this uh, month for uh, Anime Daisuke, um, I really don't have that much anime news other than, <gasps> other than <gasps> first, you got to watch Attack on Titan. Yes. yes. Right. And if you yes, haven't James. seen it yet, go on Netflix. Uh, season one and two is there. Hulu or has it too. Hulu, Crunchyroll, wherever you can find now it. Now we're talking anime or it's live anime. action? It's anime. 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 They do have a live action movie. Right. Um, that was a two part thing mm -hmm. they did. Which is, uh, the first one was pretty good, I think. Um, but the anime is excellent. And now they started third season on Toonami in August. Um, so it's been excellent so far. It kind of starts off a little slow, but I mean, it, y y they're building up to something. So mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. it's going to be great. Um, and season three is currently s uh, subbed and releasing every week on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Hulu. 
Ah, so, so I think they're mm-hmm. up to episode yeah. seven or eight now. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, Hulu has it mm-hmm. um, subtitled. So that's great. Um, so if you haven't done, done that, you know, watch Attack on Titan. It's so different from all these others, um, from all the other animes that I've seen. All right, and then I've got a bunch of Harry Potter news. Um, so I was talking about a couple months ago that the Quidditch World Cup was going to happen in Florence, Italy, which in Italian, for Florence is called Firenze. So Firenze, Italy uh, was the home of the 2018 Quidditch World Cup. The last final four was the UK, Turkey, uh, USA, and Belgium. And then the USA wind up winning the World Cup against Belgium. Uh, let's see, it was a pretty good score. The US got the snitch catch. Um, so I have it right here. How does that even work? 120 to 70. Mm. The snitch is only 30 points. It's a person dressed in yellow mm. with a sock and a ball hanging in the sock, or now they have their, they're made specially for. Okay. Right? Hey, this special, is a family have, show. Go ahead. Right. They have special shorts, you know, that Velcro on to the back there. And, uh, the and so they just the like run around the to, field? Yeah. Right. And the seekers mm. have to snatch that from the back. So, mm. and the U.S. had lost two years ago against Australia. But this year, um, the Australia yeah. and U.S. met up twice during the tournament, and the U.S. had won on both of those. So the U.S. team redeemed themselves hmm. by winning the cup this year. Yay. Right? Um, and then it was Turkey over the U.K. In the, as third place, Belgium being second, of course. And uh, that was like 110 to uh, 60. So Turkey had gotten the snitch cat. Turkey has been growing a lot in terms of teams. They've got at least six or so hmm. or more. Just for a country. Yeah. So where's the there. next World Cup going to be? They don't know yet. That's going to be determined by bid processes. Same for the U.S. Cup. Mm. They're having a bid process, mm. although I suspect it'll be in Texas. Um, it was last year. Mm-hmm. Um, before then, it was like three years in South Carolina at, at different facilities. Mm-hmm. So different cities with uh, large sporting event facilities, uh, especially with soccer fields and stuff like that, mm. are great places for. Uh, they've even had it in Kissimmee, Florida. A couple of times, so and um, so we'll have to see where it goes next. Uh, and then during the summer, they had the uh, Major League Quidditch, right? And they had the, at the final championship. That's the Benepe Cup, named after um, the first commissioner of Quidditch, um, Alex Benepe. And so uh, that was um, University of Rochester, or not Ro- uh, University of Rochester, but the Rochester community team. Um, the Major League Quidditch team had won the uh, Major League Quidditch for the summer. And let's see, the next, I have a bunch of conventions, Harry Potter conventions happening. Next summer in July is MistyCon, which is, I'm, I'm on staff, I take care of the muggle technology, all the lighting and AV stuff needed for the con. That's July 18 and 21. And then LeakyCon, which they just happened to have that uh, in back in August in Dallas. That was a huge event. Uh, I went to the very first LeakyCon in 2009. That was in Boston. And it's returning to Boston 2019, October uh, Columbus Day weekend, 11th, and 11th to the 13th in October. And um, so I've got tickets for both MistyCon and LeakyCon. So, and then... Uh, Coming up in, uh, at the uh, weekend after Thanksgiving is Northeast Comic Con. Uh, Japanese actor Akira Takarada will be there. He was in several of the Toho uh, Godzilla films. Mm-hmm. Like he was in the original one, wasn't Yes, he, he was in the original yeah. one. He was very young then. Uh, but he'll be coming to the Northeast Comic Con. Also coming up in next March, March 2019, is Costume Con. I'm, I'm going to that, too. There's a lot of costumes and masquerade shows. Hence why they call it Costume, costume Con. Con. Exactly. Hey. It's been around for... So if you show up in street clothes, do they right. kick you out? No, of course oh, not. Okay. Um, muggle attire is fine. Muggle attire. Right. 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 I got you. What's in you? you? It's going to be up in, near Salem, Massachusetts at okay. the Doubletree in Danvers. Its the theme is Witches, Wizards, and Warlocks. Oh, okay. Right. March 22nd to 24th. And then the weekend before that, um, which for me will be spring break, Saturday morning cartoons. If you loved Saturday morning cartoons, anything that's considered like Western animation or American animation that we used to watch as kids, mm-hmm. um, or even more recently on Disney Channel and Nickelodeon and things like that and Cartoon Network. Yeah. Um, 
Because now Saturday they put on morning. those stupid educational <laughs> shows. Ugh. Well, not as much anymore. No. Um, Saturday morning cartoons, March 15th to the 17th. It'll be up in Woburn, Massachusetts. Um, so that's going to be cool. Hmm. And uh, we'll talk about all the old shows and all the new shows. And <laughs> Anyway, so that's it for Anime Daisuke. Uh. Uh, we're going to go on now to Toys, Props, and, and other... other Hey, I like that one. All right, here are our wonderful camera people points at stuff with toys and props, and we speak about them. What's up there first? Let's see. Oh, because it's October, we have Halloween decorations, so that Kasulu Bank is uh, glow in the dark. And then we have our trophy that we won for Sci-Fi Journal back in 2012. And next to that is a Darth Vader pumpkin, which lights up. It's lit up at the moment, but the lights kind of dim things a little bit. And then what's the monster in the back? It's just a scary mutant cat. Oh. Uh, and then hanging off the side, which you can't see in the shot, is a mutant rat. Oh, I like it. Yeah, they're both from my yard. Cat and a rat. Yeah, they live in my yard. Very good. All right. Okay, so this is Nightwing from the Kotobukiya series. I'm probably not saying that right. You're saying but right. this is a specialized series that they announced last year called the Eichmann series, which um, is focusing on the human anatomy details. So right. for those of you who follow comics and stuff and, and a certain genre of comics. Nightwing is known for his posterior. Mm. And so this statue happens to focus on his body shape and his posterior. Right. So this is, this bounce, is, bounce a quarter off those bad so boys. So he, he is a first in, <laughs> yeah, a first in like about it. Yeah. yeah. So you can you oh, can certainly see the, the Japanese <laughs> in influence in the statue, um, and and it's very well detailed, very well made, um, and it's the first in a line of series. Oh so. my goodness! It's my favorite. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Serenity, the role playing game. You know, I found that book in my collection. Had it for a while. I've never used it, but I'm toying with the idea of starting a Serenity role playing game <gasps> group. Really? Uh, yeah. So anybody that's interested in playing that game, once I read through the rules and stuff, should be a lot of fun. Okay. Cool. And then what's that little statue in the bottom there? So that is another Cthulhu bank that right. is brought green. from Adam yeah, Tuckman, which the is, big green one. you know, he's yep. a really big Cthulhu fan. If you haven't figured it out already, yep. um, on either side of the Cthulhu are a couple of Pokemon items. Uh, one is Mew, which was one of the newer collections from the Pokemon series of toys and, and props. On the right is something I picked up at Terrificon, and, and thank you again to, to Mitch and, and the people at Terrificon. Really, really awesome convention. And so it's a wool, a little wool boffet and a homemade Pokemon terranium and inside of like a makeshift Pokeball. It's, it's really tough to see the detail on the side, but it's really, really awesome. And if you're a, a Pokemon fan, it's a great idea to have it on like your desk or something as a little prop. Nice, okay. And next to that on the right is a graphic novel called Shatter. It was released in 1984. And the interesting thing about this graphic novel is that it was, it was created completely using uh, an old Mac Apple computer. Oh, I remember that. The dots and, yep, yep all the I coloring, the letters. Yep. Everything was done using an, a gra a, an old Mac yeah, computer. Very which which computer. Like yeah, so which right. nowadays is, 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 is nothing. Everything's done on computers pretty right. much. But back then, back then it was, that was like a yeah. big deal. Yeah, and it, it reads like a cyberpunk Blade Runner type of story. It's set in that kind of a universe, which is pretty cool. It's kind of neat. All right. All right, next to that, we've got three Hot Wheels cars. Those are all Batman cars. So one of them is from uh, the Tim Burton era, 1989 Batman series. And then the one in the middle is from the 1966 TV show. And then the one on the right is from uh, the video game Arkham Asylum. So I like collecting Hot Wheels Batmobiles. So that's why we've got those today. And to the right of that is a puzzle. It's a thousand piece puzzle from the Harry Potter series, Meeting with Aragog. Uh, there's about a dozen puzzles, both either a thousand pieces or 500 pieces you can find uh, at the bookstores and other places. 
uh, I saw this when I was on Block Island. It's like, oh, I haven't seen these yet. I picked up one. And this is going to be the beginning of probably picking up all the other puzzles. Nice. <laughs> now I got to make them or just collect them? For now, collect them. But then okay. when I, if I bring them to MistyCon, then I'll put them out on the, in the common room. Yep. And people can make them while at MistyCon. Nice. Uh -huh. All right, on the bottom shelf, on one side, we have the DC Mini Mates, but they're extra large Mini Mates. Uh, and it's a two pack of Nightwing and Batgirl. It was really originally supposed to be released around Free Comic Book Day, which is why you have the Free Comic Book Day logo, but it got delayed. So it was released over the summer, but it's really cool. And anybody who knows me knows them. We're a big Nightwing and Batgirl fan, so that's why we picked it up. On the other side, Todd McFarlane Toys got the rights to Destiny, so they started coming out with Destiny oh, action nice. figures. They do a good job. Um, extremely well detailed, and that is a figure of Cade Six, who was killed off recently in the Destiny Forsaken expansion. And everybody knows this, so I wasn't spoiling it, so don't even look at me like that. <laughs> so the, the figure is highly detailed. Ian's and, going, Why? and if you do Why? get a, a de the Destiny figures and you open it up, inside it is an exclusive code to get a spawn. Um, emblem for your Destiny character online, oh, that's which neat. are extremely rare, and they're they're really cool. And last but not least, last but not least, back to back. So it was a really good time in August if you were a superhero fan. So back to back, you had Avengers: Infinity War come out one week, and then the following week it was Deadpool two. Deadpool is the super duper edition. So there's 15 minutes of, of footage that they cut out of the original theatrical release that's put in, and they also have the theatrical release in there too. So um, Really awesome, and that's available on 4K and Blu-ray. Um, Avengers: Infinity War is, is also awesome, and really nice to revisit that. Also available out now. I went to the Fan Expo Boston, formerly known as Boston Comic Con, and I got a picture with the Weasley twins, hey. James and Oliver Phelps. They're all grown up. Yeah, and they're not redheads, or you know, they're, they're actors, right? So they had dyed their hair red for the movies. Okay. Now. We got Rodan Comic Con coming up, right? Yes, mm -hmm. maybe. Na Natalie Tenna is going to be one of the guests there. She played Tonks in the Harry Potter series. So I'm going to try to get a picture with Natalie Tenna. All right. Now, so we'll be there. We'll be there. Now, if you want to get in touch with us, our email is riskvic.communications at gmail.com. We post all this stuff on the bottom so you can see it. Our website is www.risfc.org. We have a Twitter account. We have a Facebook page. And like, I, like these folks have said, we will see you at Rhode Island Comic Con 2018. Look for our table. We should be uh, there, taping sci-fi journal segments and promoting the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club. Mm -hmm. All right, any last thoughts? Shout any, out to whatever. Anything else before I start talking? So um, anyone? Nope. Yeah. Nope, anyone? Go ahead. Go, ahead. go for it. Calvin okay, so, so uh, a couple of things really quick. Um, we did cover a lot of conventions over the summer, so I, I just want to say thank you again to, to Gabe over at Pintastic. Mitch over at Terrificon and, mm -hmm. and Grant and the people over at Neon. Uh, they welcomed us with open arms. We had an absolute blast at each of those things and um, we're looking forward to covering all of them. They're going to be back next year. So um, we're going to be at Rhode Island Comic Con and as these guys know here, even though it's kind of funny that I've been on public access now for over 20 years, I'm a fairly private person. And, and so um, you guys might have noticed, so you, and I, there are people that watch the show like over, over time. So I've been a, a heavy guy for most of my entire life. And, and so um, not to go into elaborate detail, but back at, at, at Christmas time, I, I, I got a, a pretty decent health scare. Um, it wasn't anything serious, but it was serious enough to really kind of like take notice of that it was time to get serious to finally go ahead and, and do something and so I decided to make some lifestyle changes and then earlier in the year um, I signed up at the Miramar Hospital to do the weight loss program that they have over there. So these guys have been telling me for a while and now I'm physically starting to like to notice the changes so just in case if anybody came up to me and say hey are you okay you don't look like you usually do well there's a reason why I don't look like I usually do so um, as of this taping since the beginning of the year I'm down 70 two pounds awesome um, awesome it's a really really Golf good all it's a really really good program um and they have all sorts of, of, of different programs um like I, i'm currently for the moment i'm on the full fast program which is basically like protein shakes and lots of water and fluids but they have all sorts of different programs depending on you know what physical level you're at you know whatever health ailments that you have 
Um, it's medically supervised, so I mean they're always constantly checking with you and working with you. And so if you if you're a diabetic or if there's there's anything going on, there's all sorts of things they can, they can do. And, and I can tell you, and these guys can tell you from looking at me, the, the program works. It, it's really really cool. So if you look up, um, the, it's part of lifespan. So if you look up the Miriam Hospital, if you have any interest. Um, go ahead and do that. And if you see me at Ryan Comic Con, I'll, and you want to talk about it, feel free. And if you Google the word marvelous, you get Calvin. <laughs> That's it. So I am not sick. I, I am not dying, but I do look different, so that is why. Yeah. All right. Good luck, dude. We're all supporting you. You know that. Right. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Awesome. Okay, that's going to be it for the October 2018 edition of Sci Fi Journal. First, we want to welcome the Cabraras who are behind the cameras for the very first time. Yay! <laughs> nice job. And thanks to Brian in the booth. And thanks to Adam behind the camera. And thanks to Leslie, who's over there reading her Kindle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for everyone's help. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you. What? what, what? Uh, sorry, I totally almost forgot. Okay. Thank you very much for John Madeira for coming in with with the Funko Pop stuff. Yes. Really awesome guy. Uh, definitely check out the Facebook uh, website, and maybe we'll see you at a future swap meet. Okay, and we will see you in November at Comic Con. Yes. Or whatever it is going to be. Whatever. 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 Uh, we'll be there. <laughs>